Man, let's go. Let's go. I'd like to start out by saying, Call Haloyim, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Recha Kodash. Uh, welcome to another live lesson. Uh, the name of this one is In the Beginning. Now, this, uh, this um, lesson is pretty much inspired by a camp that we had, I believe it was last week. Where Elder Pastor started off with Genesis, the first chapter. And I think we only got to the first verse. And then the Spirit, you know, led other places. So, Lord's will in this lesson, we can hit a couple of points. Um, I think it's, we're only going to deal with probably like seven or eight verses, Lord's will, in this lesson. Because um, pretty much uh, once you hit the first few verses, you know, pretty much the rest of it, is, most of it is self-explanatory. Um, except when you get into around the 20th verse, 21st verse around there where it speaks about, you know, the waters bringing forth the, uh, moving creature abundantly, you know, you have to kind of get into that also because that's dealing with man uh, as well as beast, you know, that's the, which were created on the, uh, fifth day, the uh, 500, 000, the 5,000th year of the creation and Lord's will, we can get into that, you know, another time, um, I know Elder Yashawamba spirit was on him to uh he was he was uh going through you know those books uh Genesis one, two, three, four. I think he got up to like six or seven. I'm not sure how far he got on it, you know, but this is all in the spirit, you know, the spirit you may want to do something, but if the spirit wants you to go in a different direction, that's where we're gonna go. Because the spirit is like the wind. I like to say shalom to the elders, the uh, Akium. Uh, Akwath on the comment board So let's get into it uh, This is Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 This is the very first book And the very first chapter Or the very first verse Of the scriptures There's no other book that starts off like this Unless they're copying what the Bible says So it says In the beginning the powers or sorry, I'm reading verbatim In the beginning In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth Now when we go to this word beginning right what you have there is the word ba ra ash yath now ba ra ash yath could have been translated better than beginning could have been translated in the headings because ba is in if it's not connected to the word ra ash is head and the yath the yath is just you know it, it uh it's just part of the uh what makes it uh it could make it plural you know, or you have the Yath, you have Wath, you know, so the Bara Ashyath could be in the heading. Really, it should technically be in the headings. So, in the beginning, God, and when you look at the word God, oh, right here, Salaka, so created or create is the word Bara A. Bara A is to create or create it. Then the next word you see is Alahayim. Now, Alahayim is the plural form with the Yum at the end. Alahayim is the plural form. Of the word Allah or Allah, which as you see there it says English God. So when you add the yum at the end, it makes it plural. Now, why is it that you know I thought the Heavenly Father created everything? Yes, this is the Most High's program. This is his blueprint. He is the master strategist, the you know the, the master period, you know. But what he did was he created Yahweh Shai, and then from that point on, Yahweh Shai created everything else. That we see, and the spirits that Yahweh Shai created under the guise or the uh, um, the uh, tutelage of the Most High Yahweh, you know, they helped him to create everything else that we see today. All right. Now um, there was a precept that came to mind. Um, yes, it's in the same chapter. Let's now let's jump down to the twenty-fourth verse. And let's see if this is not dealing with um, more than one person, or is it just dealing with singular? Is it just is this dealing with the Most High, or is it dealing with you no, know, with other beings? I put it that way. Let's jump to the twenty fourth verse. And again, the Most High created everything. The Most High gave the blueprint. When He created Yahweh Shai, He gave Yahweh Shai the task to do the rest. Genesis 124, and God said, let the earth bring, I'm sorry, not 24, 26. 
And God said, let us make man in our image. So here we see that it's talking about more than one person because it says, let us make man in our image. That's, those are not singular. Those are plural. So when we look at the word God, the word God is Allah Hayyam, which could have been put in the English gods. And gods or and the gods or and the powers said, let us make men in our image after our likeness. See? And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So when we go back up to the top, in the beginning or in the heading, the powers, which is Yahweh Shai and the angels, created the heaven and the earth. You see, now, just to give a little more on that, I mean, you could go to St. John chapter 1, verse 1, but we also can go here to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. This is dealing with Yahweh Shai, who is the image of the invisible power, the firstborn of every creature. Why? Because the Most High created him. Right? Gave him the blueprint. And then what did he do? For by him, by Yahweh Shai, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Um, there's another one, created all things. Let's see. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know, I don't know if it's that one. Right, Ephesians 3 and 9, and to make, no, no, that's not it, yeah, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden in the Most High, who created all things by who? By Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. So he, he had the blueprint, he made the blueprint, created Yahweh Shai, and then Yahweh Shai went and created everything else that we see around. Um... Let's go to Revelation 3. And just bear with me so I can find this. Uh, right. Revelation 3, 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, or the so be true, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of the Most High. So Yahweh Shai was the beginning of the creation of the Most High. He created Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai in turn created the other angels, spirits and all that, under the orders of the Most High, and then they cre started creating everything else that we see. And when we go to the book, I mean, when we go to the word beginning, is the word arche, in the Greek, arche, which is beginning, origin, the personal thing that commences. So the Most High used Yahweh Shai to commence everything. So Yahweh Shai was the beginning of his work. He gave Yahweh Shai the blueprint to create uh, to create whatever, whatever what we see, everything else that we see. The first personal thing in a series, the leader. So he was the head of that whole situation. Um, and by which anything begins to be the origin, the active cause. You know, the extremity of a thing, of the corner of a sail, the first place, principality, rule, ma magistracy. Of angels and demons. So the Most High created Yahweh Shai. That was the beginning of his creation. And what did he do? For by him, back in Colossians 1.16, for by him, Yahweh Shai, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him because anyone who's in a position of rulership, king, peasant, you know, you know, middle ground, whatever the case is. They were all spirits at one time that came upon the earth in, in a bodily uh, form through a mother and, and a father, except for uh, um, Melchizedek. And they all had their, their, um, they all had their um, course in this life. You know, the, the, the um, lot that they had to play out. I uh, had a brother... Um, Yashalom put Proverbs 8, 22 and 23. Yep, the Lord possessed me in the beginning. This is dealing with wisdom, which is which is which is wisdom is Yahweh Shai. You know, he is the embodiment of wisdom because he is the word. It says the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his work works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. That's right, beautiful. 
All right, so now let's go. Uh, it says, uh, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him. See, they were created by him and for him. See? And, and he is before all things because he was created by the Most High. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Yeah, because Yahweh Shai was the first spirit created. That's why the Lord said, uh, call him um, his first begotten. Now let's go back to Genesis 1. In the beginning, the powers, which is Yahweh Shai and the angels, created the heaven and the earth. Now, what are the heavens? You see the heavens where the, you know you have space, you have the the uh, sky, that's another uh, form of heaven. And then you have dominions and principalities on the earth, which principalities are a cohort of demons, you know, but you could have, you know, um, you could have um, a, a set of rulers that can make up, you know, a, a cabinet, so to speak, you know, for the king on the, on the planet earth. Uh, Elder... I now put Psalm 33 and 9, for, uh, for he spake and it was done, he commanded and it stood fast. That's right, that's right. Um, damn, brothers are getting busy. All right, let me just go to GMS Spiritual Temple, John 17, 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. That's right, beautiful. Which, which that goes hand in hand with Proverbs 8, 22 and 23. Uh, fishes to hunt, turn hunters, John fifteen twenty seven, and ye also shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Yeah, so these spirits that were in the apostles came back, you know, um, as his his uh, disciples. They were they were the ones. They were some of the spirits that helped him create things in the beginning. So now they created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form. Now, why was the earth without form? The earth was there, but it was without form. What does that mean? That means that the particles, the elements that created or that make up the earth, its crust and everything around it, the waters and all that, was there, but it was in the element stage. It says, and void, because it wasn't put together yet. Okay? And darkness was upon the face of the deep. The deep being what? The deep was space. So everything was dark at one time, you know? So you had the, the uh, elements that were floating out there in space, you know? There was, it was uh, darkness out there, right? The earth and everything that you see today is all there, but it's just not put together. And this is where Yahweh Shai and the angels came together to do, to take those elements and cause those elements, certain elements to come together to create certain things because all things consist of some type of metal or some type of element like you have water that's H2O certain parts of hydrogen certain parts parts of oxygen make the the tangible water okay same same thing with all different types of elements it says um let me see I was going to look up the word deep which is the word thahawam Deep depths, deep places, abyss, the deep sea. So it's talking about the deep as far as everything that you see uh, in the heavens. All right? Even even the, the planets, everything that you see today was all space at one time. And the spirit of the powers moved upon the face of the water. So they started to, you know, um, work, so to speak. But this working came by way of the mind. They thought these things and they spoke these things into existence, right? So going down, it says, uh, And the spirit of the powers moved upon the face of the waters. The waters, when you go to the Hebrew word, the word there is ha-mayim. Ha-mayim. Uh, you also, that's also where you get the uh, word for heavens, shemayim. The sha, at the beginning of a word, if it's not connected, means that which pertains to. So, Sha Mayim, that which pertains to waters or to water. All right, so it says water, waters, water, 
water of defeat, urine of danger, violence, trans transitory things, refreshment. So it doesn't really go into what this water is, but the waters is talking about the elements that come together and, you know, and create certain things. And this is what they did when they spoke it into existence, right? So now before we go into that, let's deal with these waters. Let's deal with the element or the elements. You have something called element. An element is a part of or part or aspect of something abstract, especially one that is essential or characteristic, which is dealing with something little different. This is the death had all the elements of a great tabloid story, you know. So this is something that causes an effect. But then you have number two is each or more than one hundred substances that cannot be chemically interconverted or broken down into simpler substances. Uh, and our primary constituents of matter, see? So these are these elements are certain things that, that can't be broken down any further. You know, like it says, broken down to the very last compound. Well, the last compound that it breaks down to is what? Different uh, elements, which you have something called the periodic table of the elements, which you learned about this in biology, right? And it gives you, when you click on it, you know, you have hydrogen, you have lithium, beryllium, magnesium, sodium, and some of these are found within the body. Chromium, mag mag manganese, iron, and this is needful in the body. So this shows you that just in the makeup of the body or anything that you that you see out there that you break down, it's going to have one of these components in it or several. All right? So going back... It says, each element is distinguished by its atomic number. An example, the number of protons in the nuclei, nuclei of its atoms. All right? And that's what we see here in this table, a periodic table. Now, I looked up the word periodic table elements meaning. It says, the periodic table is a tabular array of the chemical elements organized by atomic number from the element with the lowest atomic number, which is hydrogen. Uh... To the element with the highest atomic number, organism. The atomic number of an element is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom of that element. So all of these elements you see here were floating around in, in the deep, in space. You know, and I'm pretty sure there's others. This is just what Esau, you know, was able to uh, label. Remember, they are wiser than Daniel. So... Imagine all of these just floating out there in space, you know, just, you know, and, and someone has to take them and put them together. So let's go back to Genesis. And let's move this up here. And the power said, let there be light. And there was light. So the powers out there in the heavens, in deep space, took these different particles, these different elements and illuminated, uh, put an illumination to them. They illuminated them. All right, so they brought a certain light to each one of these particles. It says, and the power said, said, let there be light, and there was light. So, so things lit up. You have light and you have darkness. So everything lit up, you know. It says, and the power said, let there be light, and there was light. And the power saw the light, that it was good, see. And the power divided the light from the darkness. That's why you have light and you have day. You have nighttime and you have daytime. You know, and that's the way that it was set up out there in that atmosphere. Okay? And that's why you see, you know, a certain part of the day you'll see the sun moving. You know, you see, you know, in the morning when it's just coming up. You see at midday when it's highest in, 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 the, in, the, uh, uh, in the sky. Then you see it coming down towards the end of the day. And then what happens? That, uh, uh, the nighttime starts to come in. This was all created in the, in the first day. So certain... Elements were illuminated brighter and other elements were illuminated uh, less. It says, And the powers called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day because the day starts when? In the evening. The evening and the morning were the first day, meaning the first thousand years. Now let's go and prove that. that that's not talking about an actual 24-hour day like, you know, like um, we have. This is the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So these 
years here with thousand year intervals. You know, these are thousand year intervals that um that um that the Lord was creating these things in. Not that He couldn't do it quicker than that, but remember, time in space is different from time here. In space or in, in the f uh, fourth dimension, things go a lot quicker. And they show you that in one of those episodes of Star Trek. I don't really remember what the name of it was. I wasn't really a big, a big Star Trek fan. You know, I would catch it from time to time, but I wasn't one of those adamant, you know, Star Trek watchers. You know, but they did show you one episode. You know, where they show you like I forget what they were. They were supposed to be angels, and as the angels were moving. The the people that were there, they were moving. It seemed like they were moving in slow motion, but they were moving regularly, as we're moving. But in another dimension, in the in the fourth dimension, we would be mo moving like molasses. All right. So it says, and the power said, uh, and the power said, let there be a firmament. Matter of fact, before we we go before we go through all of that, I got a little more. But let's go real quick back to Second Peter. Because I want to read something here out of Second Peter um, that I should have jumped to first, but that's all right. Second Peter three and ten it says, "But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise." And what is that great noise? It's dealing with the nuclear missiles, which the nuclear warheads and the missile itself are comprised of different elements from the same periodic uh, chart. All right, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, so everything you see is going to be melted by this fire. The earth also shall be, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. That's dealing with the day of the destruction of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. But what I want to do, because I believe this is the only time. No, let me not let me not commit to that because I believe I, it comes up more than that. You have the word. Stoika, stoikaan for the word uh, elements and it does appear you know more times but it come, it, it appears under different different names also so what, what it says here under stoikaan which goes back to the word stoikeo um, it says any first thing see when you go to the periodic table this these are the origins of of, of the animate objects that you see, they're comprised of some type of of a chemical element, some type of element. All right. So I said, any first thing from which the others belonging to some series or composite whole take their rise an element first principle. So what happened was in the beginning, when all of these particles, all of these elements were floating around, the spirit of the Lord. Yahweh Shai and the angels illuminating certain illuminated certain ones ones of them and caused certain ones of them to come together to create certain things. Because everything has is, is comprised of different elements. Everything. Alright. It says the letters of the alphabet as the elements of speech, not however the written characters, but the spoken sounds, the elements from which all things have come. See? The material causes of the universe. So this is what was floating out there. So like I'm trying to find this one precept. Just bear with me. Just bear with me. Um, I believe it's in the book of 2nd Ezra. But I'm not sure exactly where it is. So, And I'm not 100% sure... How it's worded, but uh, Elder Inop did put an excellent scripture up on that. You know, pretty much how everything was created by by a spoken, you know, by a spoken word. All right. Just bear with me, Baba Kusha. All right. Now let's finish this up and uh, we'll go to... 
Let me just pull this up so I can have it on the ready. Okay. Um. All right. So. All right. So. Um, it says um, the elements from which all things have come. The material causes of the universe. So now you're starting to understand a little bit more of what it means, uh, and the spirit of the powers of the powers moved upon the face of the waters, upon the face of these elements. So they pretty much hovered over these elements, right? Marakapath. It says the heavenly bodies, either as part of the heavens or as others think, because in them the elements of man. Life and destiny were supposed to reside, and that's exactly what it is. Because when you, how did how did how was Esau able to dissect all this stuff, and to name something hydrogen and lithium and beryllium and iron and zinc and all of that? Because there's these are actual elements; these are actual things that exist. And when you put certain of these together, they create certain things. And this is what man is created of. You have these elements with, we have all these elements, some of these elements within us. You see? And that's what you have. Um, you have uh, supplements, right? Then you have, um, uh, what is it? Uh, some of them are, are micro something. Uh, I can't think of the name right now. It escapes me. Um, but they're like micronutrients or something like that where you only, ha only need a, a, a little bit of each one. And there's some that you need a whole lot more of. You know, the micronutrients and macronutrients, or I mean, I forget exactly how they're called, you know. So going back, it says, um, the elements, rudiments, primary and fundamental principles of any art, science, or discipline. And this is talking about, the, you know, the, uh, the way things roll, you know, the, the, um, the uh, words are escaping me right now, you know. Con, macronutrients, con, compounds too, yep, yep. You know, so there's certain, um, trying to, I can't even think of the word right now, but you know, you brothers that, that know, you know what I'm talking about right here. It says, uh, the, ele the elements, rudiments, primary and fundamental principles of any art, science, or discipline, or the principles of anything, you know? Yep, you have the molecular structures. Yes, this is a good one here. Uh, um, Yashalom. Wisdom of Solomon 7.17. For he hath given me certain knowledge of things that are, namely to know how the world was made and the operation of the elements. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful. See, so what are the operations of those elements? Matter of fact, let me see. You know what? You know what? You know what it is. All right, let's go. Just bear with me one second. I'm going to go to that Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter. And I'm going to see if we can pull up that word. Hopefully it ain't too crazy. Come on, close, close, close. All right. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter seven. And what was that, 17? Yep, let's go to 17. Let's see what it what comes up. Elementorum. A first principle, simple substance, element. There you go. Smoke detated it with that one. All right. That that's that's it right there. So so that this is the very first principle, the very first com the, the lowest common denominator, the the least compound, you know, of uh, uh, of what these things consist of. All right. So let's see what else we have here. An example method. All right, that's going into something else. So now let's go from there back to Genesis. Uh, let's see. Matter of fact, nope, nope. Let's go. Let's go here to Second Ezra. 
2 Ezra 6 and 38, And I said, O Lord, thou spakest from the beginning of the creation. See, thou spakest from the beginning of the creation. You know, so whatever whatever was going down, it was spoken. Uh, wow, Wisdom of Solomon, uh, Elder Menadizak by Wisdom of Solomon, 1918. Uh, I feel like you, brother, I feel like you, Elder, that time when you was looking up stuff and getting into the, one of the lessons, you was like, this is exciting, man. <laughs> this is some exciting stuff. It says, uh, for the elements were changed in themselves by a kind of, ooh, harmony. Because they, certain elements you put together, they create stuff. All right? And then as you go down through the book of Genesis, the first chapter, it tells you how they spoke into existence, you know, the fruits and the trees and the earth and, you know, and man and, and everything, the, the sun, the moon, the stars and everything. It says, um, For the elements were changed in themselves by a kind of harmony, like as in the sultry notes change the name of the tune. Whoa, man. And yet are always sounds. Yeah, because you have... You have, oh snap, wait a minute. You have, uh, it's the same instrument, but depending on how you how you play the strings or, or whatever it may be, it gives a distinct sound. Same thing with the elements. You can have some of the similar elements, but depending on the 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 uh, the, the compound of, of how it's put together, it can create something totally different. You know, like if you put too much hydrogen into something, you know, like if you're trying to create water, but you put too much hydrogen or too much oxygen or whatever the case is, it's going to create something totally different. It has to follow that same pattern, that same, you know, oh man. It says, um, which many well perceived by the sight of the things that have been done. Yeah, because these things were created by the invisible powers, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, the angels, and they appeared on the earth. You know, um, for us to be able to see. Now let's go from there to, I believe that's, but I, I believe that's Colossians, the first chapter. Oh no, this is a good one too, Romans one and twenty. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, and this is why it says that we, you know, believe these things because. There was no man alive that was witnessing this event. There's no there's no man alive on a planet that witnessed the event of the creation. So how do we believe that? We believe it by faith. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds or the cosmos were framed by the word of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Shai, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Why? Because they were in their element stage. You see? And what happened? The earth was void, as we read here, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So it was darkness until the Lord brought it all together. The Most High created Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai created the angels, and they brought it all together in order for it to be seen. They illuminated certain parts of it. They made some parts still dark, but with a little bit of light, and they made some a lot lighter. They, they, they uh, distinguished between day and night. Then everything else was created. And you know the difference when you're looking at an apple and an orange. From the color... You know, to the texture, to the taste. From the color to the texture to the taste. It says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of the powers moved upon the face of the waters, these elements. Uh, man, that was that was bad, brother. That was bad. All right, so let, let me uh, click out of that. So, And so like if I, you know, if I'm... Uh, reading every brother's precepts. Um, let's see, y Yasha Allah, Proverbs eight and thirty. I was by him, yep, as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. That's right, that's Yahweh Shai. Uh, Elder Yasha Wamba, Second Ezra sixteen fifty five, which spake but the word. There you go. Let the earth be made, and it was made. Let the heaven be made, and it was created. 
And that's the same thing that went down with the rest of the creation. Which we're going to get back to that in Romans. Uh, so it says, back in Romans, I'm sorry, Hebrews. And then we'll go back to Romans, Lord, as well. Let me, let me see, is it? Nope. Let me just get this again, Romans 1, because I seem to have lost it. All right, so let's go back. Hebrews 11, 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of the Most High so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear because they were all in their element stage. Uh, Romans 1 and 20. It says, For the invisible things of him by, uh, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. See? So we understand that we were made and we understand the whole scenario now. You know, we don't know every little detail, but we have a broader understanding than we did before. It says, even his eternal power and power head, so that they are without excuse. Yeah, and that's why the word is out there. So there's no one that has an excuse. No one is exempt. All right, so like I'm sipping on this, ooh, this bitter ass tea. Okay, now, let's see what else we got. So going back to Genesis, no, matter of fact, 2nd Ezra 16, I'm sorry, 6 and 38. And I said, O Lord, thou spakest from the beginning of the creation, even the first day, and said thus, Let heaven and earth be made, and thy, and thy word was a perfect work. And then was the spirit and darkness and silence, and then was the spirit and darkness and silence were on every side, the sound of man's voice was not yet formed. So there was no one that witnessed this. Thou commandest, then commandest thou a fair light to come forth of thy treasures, that thy work might appear. And, and then we're going to get into the second day now. All Remember, all based around what? These, these uh, elements that the Lord illuminated to show you that the, the, the Most High is very complex. And as, as complex as the Most High is, He makes things easy to be understood at times. You know, just looking at the human body itself, you say that there's no God, and just look at the human body itself, and how in the hell was it all put together the way it is, the, com the complexity of it. You know? And that's why, there's, that's why the Lord put all of the nutrients that we needed, the vitamins, the minerals, and everything, in the soil, in the foods, so that when we ate it, it would replenish. And we knew what to eat and what not to eat, you know, or what combination of foods are put together to keep the body going. You see? These devils have destroyed all of that because they're trying to, they're destroying the creation of the Most High and trying to make it their own. Goddamn demons. All right, so now going back to Genesis 1 and 6. And the power, so now, once the earth was created, right? Once these element, elements were illuminated, once you, the Lord created the light and the darkness, now he's getting ready to create a place where he's going to put man. So it says, and the power said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And this firmament is a representation of the ozone layer. Now, what is the purpose of the ozone layer? The purpose of the ozone layer is to separate between the elements outside of of uh, of space and the ele uh, or outside the firmament and the elements within the atmosphere of the Earth. You see, this is why if you go up so high, you have to wear what? You have to wear uh, gear to help you breathe because at the further the further up you go, the further away. The elements are which makes it harder to breathe when you come to the earth everything is perfect for what for man to breathe when you go into the waters the elements are a lot tighter together so that the sea life can breathe you see everything is in, in, in perfect order man 
but he leave it to the devil. So the firmament or the ozone layer was put there to separate the atmosphere from space from the atmosphere on the earth. It says, and the power says, so notice he didn't make they didn't make uh, man first and then create these things. No, they created all of these things and set it up. And then once everything was established, then man came into play. You know? And the power said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it what? Divide the waters from the waters. The elements from the elements. The outer atmosphere from the inner atmosphere. Why? Because the Lord had to create a place for man to be able to breathe. Animals, birds, creeping things, reptiles. You know? So it says, and the powers made the firmament and divided the waters uh, which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And called, and the powers called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Now, right, let me just read this real quick. And the powers said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, is where you know you get your seas and stuff from. And let the dry land appear, and it was so. So like it, this, this was the elements that created the land. And it was so, and the powers called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. That's where you have waters, you have land, and you have water. And the powers saw that it was good, meaning it was according to the plans of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right? So now, when we go from here, you will not find in any verse of the first chapter of Genesis, you will not find the Most High's name here. Why? Because the Most High gave Yahweh, he created Yahweh Shai, gave him the blueprint, and Yahweh Shai created the rest of the spirits, and they started taking care of all of this. That's why I said here, and the power saw that it was good. When you go on a job, let's deal with a carpenter or somebody that's an engineer, a building a building or anything, you know, that you want to build. They're not building it out of their own accord. They're building it according to the blueprint that the architect put together. So they're following that pattern because the architect had a vision. He seen it. So what he did was he committed it to paper and he gave the schematics of how big it should be, what each room should consist of, how many bathrooms should it have, how many, you know... It should have a garage, should it have break room, should, whatever the case is. And then when the foreman goes and, and sees a blueprint, he has his workers with him to help to fulfill the vision of the architect. And that's pretty much what happened. So you're not going to find the Mosai's name anywhere in Genesis, the first chapter. But when we go to Genesis, the second chapter, we start at the first verse, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. As we were reading, and all the host of them, meaning all the stars, the sun, the moon, you know, uh, a man, you know, the, the uh, fruits, you know, the vegetables, you know, the, the animals, fish. And on the seventh day, or the seven thousandth, thousandth year, the powers ended his work, which he had made, because they ended the work of the Most High. Because he gave them... The blueprint, check it out. He gave them the blueprint, and he, this happens even today. And he gave them a time period to finish everything. Same thing with, you know, architect. They, that's why you, when you go on these different jobs, they're under, under the gun because they have a certain period of time where the architect told the person, look, this is going to take so and such time, and this is what's going to happen. Boom, it's going to be done by so and so time. So it says, uh, and the powers blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rest it he had rested from all his work which the power created and made so the most high you know was sitting back watching all of this you see then it goes on to say these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth meaning these are the records of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that what yahweh lord the lord yahweh Yahweh's powers made the earth and the heavens. So the Most High created the blueprint, created Yahweh Shai, gave Yahweh Shai the blueprint, the instructions, the time period. Yahweh Shai created the spirits that helped him to get everything going. And that's why we read 
in Genesis, the first chapter, and uh, what was it? The tenth verse, and the powers called the dry land earth, and a gathering together of the waters called it called the seas, and the powers said, and the powers saw that it was good, meaning it was according to the blueprint. So they're like, yeah, man, this is coming out banging, man. We following the uh, the blueprint to the T. And that's why the Mosai came back and what? And he checked it out, you know, and, you know, and, uh, um, you know, he was pleased. It says uh, here, it says, in the, in, the, in the day that the Lord or Yahweh's powers made the earth and the heavens. And like I said, when you go through the first chapter, you're not going to see the Mosai's name there. But he's the one that gave the power. But here, when the word Lord is in all caps, you have the word what? Yahweh, which is the Most High's personal name. All right? They got here Jehovah, but it's Yahweh. The existing one, which, you know, you could say that, but Yahweh, Yah is he, Hawa is to be or to exist. So you could say the existing one. It says the proper name, see, of the one true power. Unpronounced except with the vowel point, which is total crap. The Lord gave us a name. How are we going to call on the name of the Lord? Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it now. Let's hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Proverbs 18 and 10, right? It says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and it's safe. So how are they going to run into it? By calling upon it. There ain't no place on the earth that where, you, where you have the so-called touch of grammaton or the name of the most I spelled out and the righteous got to run and get up in there to be protected from what was coming. No. It's talking about invoking the name of the most high. And that is the 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 uh the essence, you know, and the in the uh protection. And uh, shout out to the brother out there in Australia. Yeah, them brothers, you know, they they pretty much I believe he said a 3 3 day lockdown or something like that. I was watching the brother's video last night. And, uh, you know, you know, the brother said to pray for the brothers that are out there. And pretty much, you know, we pray for brothers out there, period, you know. Um, and uh, especially there because, you know, they're getting hit first. Uh, then, you know, over there in England, brothers are going through certain, certain things, such situations with their lockdowns, which probably about another week or so, maybe two, they'll start coming over here, you know. So they just, these devils are sweeping the globe, you know. <clears throat> Uh, Elder Yashawamba, or oh, matter of fact, let me go to Gabar Adama. Says John seventeen six, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world, thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Elder Yashawamba, Psalms forty five seventeen, I will make thy name to be remembered. How is that going to be? If there's no pronunciation, it says, In all generations, therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. How is that going to be? There has to be a pronunciation. Brother Fisher's ter Fisher turned hunter. Uh, Ecclesiastes 17 and 10. And the elect shall praise his holy name. Praise uh, uh, implies what? It implies invocation, speaking, calling on that name. But the King Solomon said, They sin and they turn to this place and call upon the name of the Lord. So how are they going to be able to do that if they don't have the pronunciation? Um, same brother, uh, St. John 12 and 28. Father, glorify thy name. <laughs> Thank you. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have glorified it and will glorify it. That's right. Uh, the brother Kazakh Ban Yahawada, Proverbs 30 and 4. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the winds in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in the garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? If what? If thou canst tell. Speak it. All right. Uh, and it goes on to say, Every word of the Most High is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Uh, the brother GMS, prisoner, Prisoners of Hope. Uh, I believe that's a brother out there in England. Isaiah 52 and 6, Therefore my people shall know my name. Come on, man. How are they going to know the name? Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, 
it's a good one here. Um, this is Hebrew uh, GMS Idan Hebrews 12, 12 to 13 saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which the Most High hath given. All right. Uh, the brother Isar Issachar, Psalms 42, 44 and 20. If we have forgotten the name of our power or stretched out our hands to, the strange, to a strange God, Shall not the Most High search this out? For He knoweth the secret of the secrets of the heart. That's right. Beautiful. Uh, GMS Tazakaya, uh, and the power said, moreover, unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord power of your fathers, um, the power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob have sent me. Uh, the brother from Australia said, uh, Con Apostle, three days lockdown, but can't trust E with his word. That's right, because once people comply, that's when they make it longer. Say, oh, you know, we got to do another three days, or we got to do another week, and before you know it, a month later, you know? But that's how these devils do it. It's a slow stranglehold on the planet. They're sweeping the planet through the spirit of the Lord. The Lord is making them sweep the planet. You know, we're coming to that point, you know? Uh... All right, so pretty much, you know, the point has been made, you know, I just wanted to go through a couple of uh, verses in Genesis, the first chapter, to show you that thou was speaking about the elements. Um, so with that, you know, I pray that your brothers have been edified. You know, your brothers stay strong, stay prayed up. Your sisters also, um, you know, pray for the brothers out there in Australia, you know, Europe, you know, all over the planet, you know, because uh, this devil's going to come down having great wrath, knowing that he has but a short time, but our uh, salvation is near. You know, our protection is close. You know, all they have to do is make their move, you know, and the Lord Yahweh Bashem El Shai is going to checkmate them, which is going to be the Lord, you know, making the move anyway. Let me leave you with one last precept, you know, for comfort. Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord. Here we go again with the name. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Hey, over there, Australia, that's part of where the rising sun comes up. Japan, then you, you know, keep coming, you know, it says, um, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem El Shai, shall lift up a standard against him, so the Lord's going to cause something, he's going to intervene, because it's him working on the left hand anyway, you know, that's right, uh, Elder Yashwama said, those Alahayim uh, will rule under Yahweh Shai in the new world, yeah. And what the scriptures say that we're going to judge angels, meaning we're going to be able to send angels on missions. All right, so with that, I pray that your brothers have been edified. Till the next time I say shalom.